The death of Henry Morgenthaler just days ago has placed new attention on a highly divisive issue in this country, abortion. Stephen Harper has said numerous times that he has no interest in reopening the debate, but 25 years after abortion was decriminalized by the Supreme Court, opponents are taking new, sometimes extreme approaches to spread their message. Carolyn Dunn has that story tonight. These are the faces of today's anti-abortion movement. Young people standing outside a high school with extremely graphic placards CBC News has decided not to show. The target? Kids who have never known a time when abortion wasn't legal in Canada. Our philosophy is if someone is old enough to have an abortion, they're old enough to see an abortion. This student has a pregnant friend and she's weighing all her options, including abortion. It's part of the option she has, but... It's I know it's a bad option, but yeah, I mean, it's future instinct too. As, as much as I he agrees to take a phone number. And for the Canadian Centre for Bioethical Reform, that's a victory. Its leader says it's the tip of the iceberg. Far from being a fringe movement, we're very much becoming a mainstream movement. At the very least, an increasingly visible force. Young, professional, articulate and seemingly well-funded. They wallpaper postcards in writings of politicians who aren't pushing the anti-abortion agenda. They hang graphic banners to catch the eyes of thousands of commuters. This is not the anti-abortion movement of Dr. Henry Morgenthaler's era. Not the police and not the state. Women must control our fate. Stupid women. You can choose whether to have a baby or not before it's created. The Supreme Court struck down Canada's abortion laws in 1988. Bravo for the women of Canada. The decision also changed the tone of the debate. Now there are laws in some jurisdictions which limit how close protesters can get to abortion clinics and their patients. Hermina Dykeshorn was front and centre of the anti-abortion movement during the Morgenthaler era. You'll still find her picketing an abortion clinic in Calgary from a distance, and she says somewhat silenced. We are not even allowed to discuss abortion uh, in Canada. It's, you're demonised and marginalised if you do so. People like Rebecca Sullivan have concerns the conversation was stopped prematurely too, but for very different reasons. We have whole provinces, we have large regions in this country where safe therapeutic abortions cannot be obtained. But there's little appetite among most Canadians to reopen a debate they consider long closed. So perhaps the biggest challenge for this new generation of anti-abortion advocates is getting people to even notice them. That's where those shocking pictures of bloody aborted fetuses come in. Those tactics are often challenged. That really doesn't do anything but, but give me sort of like a sensational image. I want information, not a sensational image. They're going back to very hostile, very aggressive, um, very hyperbolic tactics. Rebecca Sullivan doesn't think the graphic images are effective and she says young pro-choice activists are fighting back, just more quietly. They're providing a safe space close by the anti-abortion protest where those who have been offended or affronted can go and have a conversation. The rebranding of the anti-abortion movement is perhaps a sign the debate never really went away. Carolyn Dunn, CBC News, Calgary. Canadian